welcome to worship on this 11th Sunday of Pentecost. Welcome to all of you who are worshiping with us virtually. What a lovely day to be together. I have a couple of announcements for you. First of all, your quarterly statements are in the narthex on the table, so if you haven't grabbed yours yet, please grab yours on your way out. It saves us postage. Um, I have an exciting announcement. The restrooms are all complete. Now, for some of you, that means more than others. <laughs> if you're visiting, you're like, what? So the project was started in 2019. We have 11 bathrooms, 11. They're all done. So what's very exciting, we want to thank Terry Novo for all of his work throughout all of these years. But they are finally finished. Um, I'll give you a tour later if you would like. <laughs> I want to remind you that we're having an ice cream social next Sunday, uh, August 11th at 2 o'clock at Shillington Park, Pavilion Number 3. The ice cream truck from Sweet Ride will be there. Our outreach team is bringing toppings, which is exciting. Uh, <laughs> so the ice cream is paid for. So please join us. The truck will be there from 2 to 3. Uh, and I hope to see you all there. It's ice cream. Come on. It's like 90 degrees outside. You eat the ice cream quick, you get more. It's fine. <laughs> Those are my announcements. Everything you need to know to follow along with our worship service is printed in your bulletins. We begin this morning with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. I invite you to either remain seated or to kneel. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Now hear the good news. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there's always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy, you are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Our gathering hymn for this morning is hymn number 607, and I invite you to please rise in body or spirit as we sing.
imparts the saving grace of Jesus Christ and the abundant life of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us. We eat and are satisfied. Fill us and this world in all its need with the life that comes only from you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading from today is from the 16th chapter, chapter of Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine, flaky substance as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Please read responsibly Psalm 178, verses 23 through 29. So God commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. God provided for them food enough. Raining down flesh upon them like dust, and flying birds like the sand of the seas. So the people ate and were well filled, for God gave them what they craved. The second reading for today is from the fourth chapter of Ephesians, beginning with the first verse. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says, he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity, 
to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were beside the sea, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it was my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace, peace, and mercy be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> One day there was a little girl named Emma who was playing with her paper dolls. And these were special paper dolls because they were all Bible characters. Suddenly, while playing with the dolls, Emma realized that the Jesus paper doll was missing. Emma and her mother looked all over the house, but they couldn't find Jesus anywhere. So Emma and her mother went on about their day, and later that afternoon, Emma came running to her mother with some good news. Mom, I found Jesus, she declared. It turned out that Jesus was in one of her father's magazines, and Emma proudly held out her new Jesus for her mother to see. Well, her mother gasped as she took the picture from Emma's hands. It seems it was a picture of a tall, bearded, homeless man dressed in rags. Because of his long hair and beard, he did resemble Emma's paper doll Jesus, so Emma decided that this was her new paper doll of Jesus. As Emma's mother reflected on Jesus' own words about the poor and the powerless, she agreed that her little girl 
had indeed found Jesus. Now listen again to the opening of this morning's gospel. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. You see, just previous to this search, the crowd had witnessed Jesus feeding the 5,000. They knew that this man was someone special, someone they wanted to be near someone they wanted to see more of, someone they wanted to find. And today, over 2,000 plus years later, we are still searching for Jesus. Rich people, poor people, young people, old people, people of every race and nationality, we are still trying to find Jesus. Think about your own lives. How often, when you are feeling down and out, when you're having a particularly bad day, how often do you find yourself looking for a sign? A sign of God's presence in that moment. A sign that God is with you in the midst of your trouble. A sign of hope in the midst of the darkness. For when we are on the verge of losing hope, that is when we need Jesus the most. In hospital beds, at foreclosure sales, in addiction centers, in the unemployment line, in our cars, at our jobs, in our schools, all over the world, all over this community, and even in this place, there are people who are quickly losing their last signs of hope. It has been said that we can live many weeks without food, a few days without water, but not an hour without hope. Dr. Harold Wolf, a professor in the medical school at Cornell, did a study on the effects of hope on the human body. And in his conclusion, he said, when a person has hope, they're capable of bearing incredible burdens and cruel punishment. But when hope is gone, people fall apart emotionally, spiritually, and physically. Weeks without food, days without water, but not an hour without hope. People who are on the verge of losing hope need Jesus. And dear church, maybe you are one of those people. These are difficult times. Some of us are concerned about our jobs, some are concerned about family members, others about their own health and the health of their friends and family. Those who came searching for Jesus had seen him multiply the fishes and the loaves. They knew he could help them with their problems. For some of them, this was the first glimmer of hope that anyone had ever given them. Jesus cautioned them that he had not come to minister to their physical needs, but to their spiritual needs. He did not come to give them the bread that spoils, but the bread which endures unto eternal life. And if they would eat the bread which he came to give, he promised them the rest of life would fall into place. People who are on the verge of losing hope need Jesus. And we are all at one time or another part of the searching and seeking crowd. But how often do we, like the crowds in this story, get trapped in that idea that hope has to look a certain way. Or more importantly, hope has to be familiar to us, and it has to come in some way that we've seen or experienced before. You see, the crowd in this story had just experienced the, meat, the feeding, the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. 
And they were so impressed that now they wanted more. They say, what sign are you going to give us that, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. In other words, look, we were really impressed with the whole feeding of the 5,000, but what else have you got? This need the crowd has for more blinds them to what is already present to them in that very moment. Miraculous, though the multiplication of the loaves and the fishes was, it was still just ordinary bread. But the manna in the desert, the bread that had come straight from heaven when the Israelites were wandering in the desert, was perhaps even more impressive. The crowd wants to know if Jesus can pull off something like that. Can he top Moses? Which is so human. Because we all know that we need to see bigger and better. Look at what's happening at the Olympics. I mean, and if you don't know about me, I am a bit of an Olympic junkie, so. It doesn't matter how many medals and Olympics that Simone Biles has been in. We want more. We want to see her win more goals. It's the same with the swimmer Katie Ledecky. It doesn't matter that she holds every record there is. It doesn't matter how many medals she has already won. We want and expect more. We, the crowds, have experienced the miracle of former Olympics, but it's not enough. We want more. We demand more. And the crowd that has followed Jesus, the crowd that will not leave him alone, wants more as well. And what we see is Jesus stressing to all who are present that just by his being there, just by standing in their presence, he already was topping Moses or anything else that had ever appeared on the earth. He's trying to get them to understand that they were looking straight at the bread of life. That bread that had come down from heaven to be made in human form. They had hope standing right in front of them. But they missed it. They couldn't see it. And maybe part of the explanation for this is because they were still looking to the past, still thinking more about what Moses did once upon a time rather than seeing the new thing that God was doing right before their very eyes. When we are searching for Jesus, sometimes we find him in the last place we would expect. We are often looking for him in the most grandiose of circumstances. We're looking for the great sign. But sometimes he's in the hand that holds ours when we're hurting. Sometimes he's in the voice of the one who calls us just to say hello. And sometimes he's in the eyes of the one who tells us that they love us. And sometimes, as that little girl Emma knew, he's in the face of the homeless man who stands alone on the city street corner. We search for Jesus every single day. And sometimes we need to be open to the fact that he may be standing right in front of us, offering us his very self, his very body. Jesus told the crowd who came seeking him that they needed the bread that endured unto eternal life. They said to him, sir, give us this bread. 
Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Those who come to me will never be hungry, and those who believe in me will never thirst. Is there an emptiness in your life today? Have you come in search of Jesus? Well, welcome to this place where I see Jesus each and every day in your faces and your smiles. Welcome and see Jesus in the face of the person sitting next to you. See Jesus in the embrace of the one who shares the peace of God with you. Taste Jesus in the bread and wine at the table. Hear Jesus in the voices of those who join us in singing today. And then, take Jesus out from this place and into the world and show others how the Jesus they so desperately seek, the one they are searching for and asking for, show them Jesus in your actions, in your prayers, in your very presence. Give those who have no hope the comfort they are seeking by being Christ's hands and feet in their lives. Offer them a glimpse of Jesus. Amen. Now I invite you to turn to hymn 470, and I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we sing. our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Holy God of all creation, you are the source of all life. Where the sun blazes hard and strong, bring a gentle breeze. In the places experiencing the cold of winter, bring your warmth. Merciful God, compassionate God, help government leaders of this world unite for peace and justice. Humble all who hold authority, that power is directed toward a more just society. Continue to protect and be with the people of Ukraine and Gaza. Merciful God, bread of life from heaven, you feed us. Fill all who hunger with needed nutrition and open our hearts to eliminate hunger in this world. May we see a day when all are fed. And we pray especially this day for Jan Berbalet, Karen Berbalet, Ellen Brown, Joyce Brown, Sherry Dodario, Joan Esterly, Elaine Gassert, Tracy Gould, John Gracie, Beryl Hill, Charles Hughes, Larissa Kelly, Carl Kendall, Tony Lawrence, Dave Lord, Brent Manley, Rory Manwiller, Roberta Mitchell, Paul Moore, Travis Pennypacker, Penny Pinto, Theodore Salonek, Myrtle Schlout, Judy Shore, Lauren Sullivan, Marie Swigert, Ginny Whiteman, Joan Youngerman, and Kathy Zadlow. In your mercy. Redeeming God, we give you thanks for the lives and witness of your saints now departed. Bring your beloved into eternal glory, opening wide the gates to the heavenly banquet. Merciful God. <coughs> We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. And now, dear church, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's share that peace with one another.
us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for everyone, for all the people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the Lord's table, and God does the inviting, and everyone is welcome to the table. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come.
I invite you to rise in body or spirit. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now the blessing of God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Before I tell you to turn to the back of your bulletin for the sending hymn, could you join me in thanking the choir of Opus One for providing our music for today? Thank you. You're all invited to come back anytime. Let's sing our sending hymn on the back of your bulletin.
the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.